Here's a request that I've gotten variations on uh, over the years, so I finally decided to address it. Uh, how do you convey fabric texture? And this person calls especially for satin versus metallic versus velvet versus cotton and comments, I know Rembrandt was a master at this, but can you break it down for us? Well, this is going to sound like a broken record. Well, you know I always come down to two things, how to observe and the technique to use to translate what you observe. Of course, Rembrandt was a master of technique. He was also a master of observation. So there's one thing. The other thing is, if you look at Rembrandt's paintings, the portraits, where we can see the various fabrics, you really can't identify so specific a fabric you might not be able to know by looking at Rembrandt's paintings whether it's wool or cotton. And so I don't think they had metallic uh, textures in those days. Lots of satin and silk. Uh, and you can, you can see that difference between, let's say, satin and, and wool are the more absorbent, uh, more absorbent rather than reflective fabrics. So here I've got a uh, close-up of one of Rembrandt's paintings where we can see where he's used kind of rough brush strokes but the technique of the rough brush stroke is translated through guess what value and we see in this one this is the same fabric here we see here he's translated two different kinds of fabric now we we could maybe assume that maybe this is linen because of what we know of the fabrics that were available in Rembrandt's day. Maybe it was linen, it could be cotton, it could be wool. And so we, you really, when you're painting, you really can't show the specific uh, fabric, but you can show is it a highly reflective fabric, meaning like satin and silk, they have a shiny surface think of a mirror is the most shiny surface and how from when we when we look in a mirror we see a strong reflection well the 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 more shiny surfaces of fabric reflect the light the softer fabrics absorb the light and so what we do as painters then in order to show that contrast or to communicate something about the quality of the fabric we do that with value, more, more with value than with anything else. So this, this is about how to observe and, and translate the softer fabrics versus the more reflective fabrics. And then you get down to the pattern that's in there. That's a, a different thing. So this is what you ask for, the type of fabric. Let's just take a close look at what is really going on. Now we know that the technique has got to be gradation. You've got to, in, no, I'm going to say it a different way. If you, if you know the gradation technique, how to use the brush to gradate uh, values, or gradate, uh, you could gradate hues or whatever, but I'm talking about gradating values. If you know how to use the brush to gradate values, then you've got the technique right there. If you don't know that technique, then you would need to practice that technique before you attempt to do any kind of fabric. Now I've got their quick tips, you can check it in the list. We've got quick tips about gradation uh, and, and brush strokes for gradation and that sort of thing. So the, the thing to observe here then in the different kinds of fabric is what kind of gradation is it? Now you might not realize but there's such a thing as a smooth, uh, as a fast gradation and a slow gradation. The slow gradation is when the light gradates very slowly moving from a lighter to a darker or a darker to a lighter. 
the length of that movement is very uh, is longer than where there's a highly reflective surface you have a faster gradation it's quicker the change is quicker the change in value is quicker uh, and also now all this depends upon it being under the same light the same kind of light source so let me show you about that so you can see here when we look at this and we look at the color uh, the value scale here let's just put the value scale right over here when you see this this is the reflective fabric you see very strong light on this side very strong dark on this side but the gradation there is that gra gradual I mean that very quick change transition between the light and the dark but then when you look at look at this one, the softer fabric, you see the same sort of thing, dark going into dark, light going into the dark. We see a much longer gradation, much longer gradation. Well, but the transition is about the same, but the amount of light and the length of the gradation is much longer, uh, especially in the light. But you can actually see it in the dark too. But these things translate more in the light. The reflective quality translates more in the light. So there's one thing. The gradation is longer and longer for the more softer, less reflective fabrics and a much shorter gradation, more abrupt for the more reflective and the shinier fabrics. So there's one thing. I'll show you uh, how we can handle that in just a moment. So that's the first thing. The other thing is that the light that's reflecting in a, in a shiny fabric is much stronger. It's a higher value light. You can see that right here if we take the, the value scale and if we just put my little, you see the little uh, reader, the value one, this reads here. Now also keep in mind that this is a photo, probably a photo of a photo uh, of the painting itself and so it, it shows it, I think, darker than we see it in real life. Also that it's aged over the years, uh, the lights get darker for various reasons. So we see that there, but then when we move over to the, to the lighter one, of course the, the, the color is different. We see it's a darker value. The light is actually a darker value underneath. So we have two things there that we're working with, and that is three things actually. The blending technique, what the brush does, uh, and in handling the value, we're gradating. It's a short gradation for the shiny surfaces and a longer gradation for the more absor absor absorbent surfaces. So I'm going to, I've got um, two photos of fabric here. They're not exactly, but they're close. I wanted to get uh, fabrics that are of same color so that you can see that. Uh, the light on the fabric is a little different. The light is a little stronger on this one than it is on this. This was wool, wool and this is satin. Now, you can see the, the what I mean by the longer and shorter gradation. You see very subtle here, the very subtle movement of dark to light. A very quick movement you see here from the lightest light to the darkest dark with the long light, lots of light, more light in proportion in the lighter portion. So the way you would go about doing that, now I'm not going to, uh, um, you'll need to diagram the shape of the fabric and that's another lesson. But I'm just going to look at, at the gradation part of it. So if, if, if we were taking this one for example, this kind of gradation that we're seeing here, then you see that you the, the values, the, the quality of values are the same. The darks here are are as dark where they go into the deep deep dark they're just as dark as the darks are here the lights in this one are not as light as the lights are here so that means we have a closer value gradation to begin with so if we started the gradation with the darkest dark I'm just going to do a straight uh, vertical gradation to show you what I mean by the difference between the long and the short gradation so if we start here with a very dark very strong dark like this and then for translating or responding to the softer fabrics that gradually changes very slowly so we just gradually get that a little bit lighter now you see you can't see a whole lot of value difference between the color the value of the, the blue I just put down but you can see it a little bit 
And then it gradually, it, it's a very long movement, very gradual. So you see I gradually add just a little bit more of the lighter color. And I set the value lines up on my palette to make gradating colors much easier without having to uh, uh, mix so much as I go. So you see that's a very, very slow gradation. I'm going to really, really wring it out and make it slow. So gradual, gradual, and slow. This is a very slow gradation. Let's get the paper towel here and yeah, so we can keep a true gradation. Now, if we're looking at something like we're seeing right here, where as this is moving up, it goes it goes into the dark like we like it does here. Well, let's say if we see something like we're seeing right here, where the dark comes down and then it gradually moves into light. You see there, if you see something like you see here, you see the fold actually folding over and reaching for the light, then that is also very slow. So if we saw something like that, a change like that, like this, then that change would be a value that's not as light as this change would be. So in that case, look at the value and paint the value you see. In this case, I'm looking at kind of a middle value there. And so this is what I'm seeing now. I will do that very slow blend between the two. And you see that doesn't get much lighter. Now, when, if the light is shining on it, if the light was shining on it as directly as it is there, it would get maybe a little bit lighter than we're looking at there. But that's the sort of thing that you need to look for. So this is a very slow gradation where it very where the gradation takes more space it's a longer gradation it takes more space to go from the darkest dark to the lightest light now if you see a gradation like this the difference is and I'll show you right here on this one the difference is the speed of the gradation all right so here's how this would go if you're using, if you have the reflective surface, so you may have this in shadow, in a shadow area for a longer time, but then when it hits the light area right there, it hits it more strongly. Like something like this. So you have a stronger jump between the dark and the light. Like that. Now, that needs to be blended so that there's always in, fa in fabric you're going to have the there is the transition between the shadow and, and what's not in shadow is always that transition and that transition has to sh be blended that's where the blending technique comes in it's that transition now now it jumps quickly from right here jumps quickly into light and most colors, they don't just change in value, but they'll, they'll, they'll pick up more warmth of the color as, the, as that blue does. Now I'm going to now reach for the white, and I'm going to make a fast gradation. And that fast gradation, let's see where I'm going, right here. Let's make it even faster than that. means that that light is springing up rapidly. See, there's a difference between the, the speed of the gradation and what I'm doing right here and what I did earlier. And then it continues, in this case, that light continues as it's moving, as, it, as the fabric is moving within that light area. But the, the key in this is observing the movement here and keeping it gradating, keeping those transitions, keeping the edges soft as you make those transitions. That just that's just really hit it hard with some light right here. What we know about Rembrandt was that 
uh, he, m many of his paintings were, uh, he's known for the chiaroscura in the paintings, and that is the extreme uh, transition from light into dark. So now we see that kind of gradation. Now we have to get that gradation here too. And if if you're doing that with uh, thick brush strokes, you would have some texture there, but you're still going to have that gradation. You're going to have the edges softer. So you can see there, and that's how the, the difference between it moving slowly, the gradation moving slowly means gradual change, and it moving rapidly. And if you learn how to use the technique of, of blending to create that gradation, and then use your observation uh, to determine how fast or how slow the gradation is, I think you'll find that you can translate fa fabric beautifully. Be sure to view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section, and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to dyingmize.com, where I have full-length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.